Okay, so for today's setup guide, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up the Windows Specky ZX Spectrum emulator. This is a very awesome emulator and it's a very simple emulator to use. So of course there's plenty of ZX Spectrum emulators out there in the wilderness to download, but this one is so simple to use. I'm gonna be showing you different file extensions in this system, as well as how to configure your controller and actually look at some video settings so you can get the best performance and the best look for your ZX Spectrum retro collection. So anyways, this is a specky setup guide, check this one out. <laughs> Before I start today's Specky emulator from Windows Setup Guide, if you like what you see today, hit notifications and subscribe. That means every time I release a retro emulation setup guide video, you'll get notified for it. It also helps my channel out a great deal. So we're looking at the Specky emulator today, and yes, there's a lot of Spectrum emulators out there in the wilderness, and in fact, the developer behind Specky even admits that on his website. But for simplicity, this one is very good. In the past, I've covered a couple of different ZX Spectrum emulators, such as uh, Spectaculator and Fuse emulator. That was going back over a year ago, and I've not actually uploaded a ZX Spectrum standalone since. So what we're going to do is just go over to the website, and we can download the latest version of Specky, which is 5.9. And just drop down below and we'll see just here what Specky can actually load. So it's going to be all your classic file types just here. .zae, .snap or .sna, .tap files and so on. Now this is available actually for multiple different platforms. Uh, Linux, Android, MS-DOS and so on. I'm going to download this for Windows. And once we downloaded it we're going to end up with a zip folder as you can see just here. What I'm going to do after downloading it is create a new folder on my desktop. So right click, just go to new folder and I'm going to title it Specky. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it Specky because my son once or twice called me Specky because I wear glasses and we got Specky here. So me and this emulator has got a lot in common, I think. So I'm going to drag my zip folder I've just downloaded into that Specky folder I've just created on my desktop. And I'm going to right click on the spec key and just extract it into this new folder. And here we go. So this is a contents and as we can see in here, we've got lots of different ROM files which are going to be supporting the various different types or models of ZX Spectrum inside of spec key. So we're going to delete this zip folder. We no longer need that. And if we open up spec key by using the executable just there, double left click. And this is Specky, so first thing I'm going to suggest doing is just take a look at video settings. Uh, if you press Alt and Enter together, you're going to go direct into a full screen mode. And Alt and Enter together again will bring us back into window mode. Now, if you don't want full screen mode, we can actually adjust the size of the window mode. If we go to video, we can actually set this to say 1024 by 768 and so on. So that option is there. So first of all, let's look at hardware. If I go to hardware and computer model, we can emulate through Specky anything from the classic ZX Spectrum 16 to 48K models uh, to the 128K uh, to the plus two, plus two A, which was the black model, uh, to plus three ZX Spectrum, which was the floppy drive version. Uh, we've got the American equivalent Timex Sinclair machines, and this even emulates Sam Coupe and of course the russian equivalent so what we're going to do then is actually load up a game and this is so simple to do this so the first game i'm going to show you is going to be a 48k game so to do this i'm going to go to hardware computer model and change the machine to a 48k spectrum Now, traditionally, with a 16 or, say, 48K Spectrum, uh, we need to manually type in, obviously, J-Load, and then followed by press and play on tape recorder. We can actually get Specky to auto-boot the games for us. So, what I'm going to do to open up the game, I'm going to go to Open. And then my games are just here, and I'm going to open up my 48K game, which is Valation, which is in .tzx file extension. Open. 
So as you can see here, it says, do you wish to always open .tzx files with spec -E? So that's up to you. I'm going to just press yes. Now, like I said just a minute ago, we can actually use spec -E to auto-boot our games rather than typing in commands. If you don't like it to auto-boot games and you prefer the traditional way of typing in commands, if we just go over to hardware, you can actually deselect or uncheck auto load tapes in disks, and then that will give you the ability to type in your J load. So, what I'm going to do is go into the game itself. So, this particular game is going to be controlled by keyboard. So, I'm going to just leave the keyboard controls as they are and just press no. So we got video options here, what we can use to make things look maybe a bit more to your taste. If we go to color palette, by default it's using, well, default palette. We can actually change this to monochrome CRT, so it changes into black and white. And we can also use this color palette to emulate a green CRT. So obviously green CRT, well, in my opinion, more Amstrad CPC, but could be wrong. Also under video, we can go down to interpolate video, and this is gonna scale the game or add filters to it. For example, if I was to go on to the bottom one here, the two times south algorithm, it's gonna add a slight blur to it. Whereas if we go back to video again and use a different option, such as uh, say scale two times algorithm, if you don't like using this type of filter effect, then just go to nearest neighbor and that's gonna take you to that pixelated look. We can also use scan lines on this, which looks pretty good. If we go to video, of course, and go to simulate scan lines, we got three options here of different scan lines. So TV scan lines, LCD scan lines, and LCD raster. If I put LCD raster on, you can now see that there's small little squares, almost like maths graphs paper. And obviously TV scan lines is going to give us TV scan lines. So lots of player rounds with just there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to manually load up a 48k game. So to do this, we obviously first need to go to hardware and uncheck auto load tapes and discs. So what I'm going to do is go to hardware reset. And that's going to bring us back into 48k. So now that auto load is actually off, as we can see, what I'm going to do is just open my game, which is going to be my 48k game. And what I'm going to do next is just type in J and then followed by Control and P together. And then if I press enter. So next up, I'm going to show you how to actually connect and configure your controller. And for this, I'm going to be using a Google Stadia controller that I've got plugged in and the machine I'm going to be emulating is the 128k model so first of all I'm going to need to go to hardware computer model and swap this over to the ZX Spectrum 128kb and what I'm going to do next is just go to input and if I go down one to player one joystick I can then see 6 axis 18 button which is my Google Stadia controller so that's now selected, and once this is selected, we can also select automatic fire. So that's entirely up to you if you want to do that. But I'm going to load up my game, and I'm going to make it auto-load this one. So auto-load tapes and discs, and file, and open. And my 128k game is the one in the middle just here. If I double left click on this, and again, just like the .tzx file extension, we're also going to get this come up for .trd files too. I'm going to press yes. Now obviously with many Spectrum games, we're actually going to have to use keys in order to set up Kempston. 
So what I'm going to do is just use the cursor keys on my controller to go to settings and just set this up. <laughs> So totally recommend this game if you've not played it. If you're a fan of Nintendo NES Power Blades, then you'll likely like this game I'm playing. So again, just like the other game, we got the same video options. So we can change the color palettes. Uh, we can change the filters it's using. And you're also going to notice at the bottom, we've got apply color filter, which I didn't mention just now. So obviously we got RGB raster here, CMY raster, and so on. Let's just check out sepia tones. <laughs> And we can also save our games using Specky, so just go up to File to do this, and we can save Snapshots. So if I was to save a SNA Snapshot, just left click, and I'm going to give it a file name. So I'm going to type in just save for example, and followed by the file extension SNA. If I just save this to my games folder. And there we go, we now have the save file of this game. And if I just close out of this game, so I'm going to go to hardware, hardware reset, and then to open up that snapshot I've just saved, I'm going to go to open, and I can open this save just by using that save file I just created. So double left click on it. Yes. <laughs> And if you find you've applied too many filters like I've just done and I just can't make Ender Sense of what's going on, what we can do is actually go to File and Clear Settings and Quit. And that's going to close it down, but when we boot Specky back up again, all those settings which I've applied are going to be gone. And here we go, so even the model, the computer model Spectrum, has been wiped, so we can literally start from scratch with this. And finally, we've also got the ability to disable and enable fast loader for loading our games. So if you're one of those people that likes to sit in your chair for 10 minutes and watch the game load with those flashing screens, then what we need to do is go to hardware and just make sure fast tape loader is disabled. What I'm going to do next is open up my next game with the computer model, which is going to be the plus two model. So. With the fast loader now disabled, what I'm going to do is also make sure that auto load tapes and discs is also unchecked. And I'm going to go to open and open up my next game. Now, because I've disabled auto load, if I just press enter on my keyboard where we can see tape loader like you would a real spectrum, it's going to say insert tape and press play just like a real spectrum. So to do this, we're going to go to hardware, and from hardware, we're going to go to start or stop tape. Now we can also adjust the sound under loading. So for example, if I go to audio and no sound, And I think my fiance prefers it with no sound, and that's fair enough. You either love these noises or you don't. Me, I personally like them, but we have got the ability there to disable sounds for loading games. And if I want to enable the sound, I've got a choice here. I can go to melodic MIDI sounds, which sounds a bit odd. We also got 11 kilohertz wave synthesis. And we've got 22 kilohertz wave synthesis. And 44 kilohertz wave synthesis. So really that's entirely up to you. And if you've got a partner which don't mind the sound of ZX Spectrum, then by all means blast out those speakers and hear that sound.
And that's it for today's Specky for Windows setup guide. So I apologize if I blast out your eardrums, but we had to do this. It's ZX Spectrum and it's also iconic ZX Spectrum those load of noises. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notifications so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And also be sure to subscribe. Join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.